Classic Hatha Sun Salutation Chair Variation. Beginning in Tadasana, inhale, arms up for upward salute. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, right leg back for high lunge. Exhale through center. Inhale, seated cow. Exhale, seated cat. I'm happy these people are moving. I think it's awesome to move and especially move in places that you want to move. Like, that's cool. I just can't help but to think that there might be something impeding this woman's ability to move in this particular type of way. Like, if you're doing yoga, that's cool. Like, I know there's a lot of benefits to yoga, like stretching out your body or whatever, like getting the movement in places that you wouldn't, wouldn't ordinarily get. But uh, I see that just sitting down. You know, I see the, the, the joyful movement tags. I see the fat yoga tags. But I also see that you're doing this stuff in a chair. And it's kind of think, doesn't that defeat the purpose of doing yoga? Like, what are you really doing at this point? Like, I can, I guess I can do that too. You know, like she said, move the leg back. I guess I can move the leg back like this and put my arms up. In a, like, I'm not really getting much out of it. You know, I don't know. I, I feel like the entire purpose of yoga is to do it while with your body not being aided by a chair. I could be wrong, but I just like, when I saw this, I was like, wait, hold on. This doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. I thought like, I thought you guys had to do yoga while on a mat or something. Or like laying down and like moving your body in a particular way. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But it's kind of feel like sometimes I feel like people want to do stuff and it's just not in their wheelhouse to do it, right? Hear me out. A few years back, there was this make a wish, right? And it was a little girl. She had no arms. And I think she had like a finger. She had like a finger on her shoulder, right? So she had like this little finger and they asked her, they said, what do you want for like your make a wish, right? And she said she wanted to throw the opening pitch at the baseball game of her like home seat like the home season or whatever at her at her like hometown or whatever and they were like sure great and i saw the video of this little girl and they put like the ball in her little nub right her little like finger hole thing and then see so this girl's like nine and they put it in there and then she threw it right and you know what's really crazy though is that the guy at the very end you know like the guy that's supposed to catch the ball or whatever i forgot what the name of that guy is he was at the like he was like actually at the distance that you were supposed to be at right so these guys are supposed to be throwing like 100 mile per hour balls or whatever i don't know if he thought he was expecting this girl to throw like a 100 100 mile per hour ball or whatever but she did one of these and the ball just fell down and then everybody clapped for her and i just kind of thought you don't feel bad you don't feel bad knowing that this girl just wasted a make a wish i mean she probably got something else probably because this was like ridiculous you know i would have at least got like a lego venator set or something like that but they gave this girl this honor of throwing out the opening pitch and there were people in the audience and they were clapping for her and i saw like this is bullshit, bro this girl literally wasted this this she didn't have arms she didn't have arms dude and like i get it i get it you want to do the stuff that you're not ordinarily able to do but at some point, somebody's got to tell you, like, it's not for you. Like, this is, you know, I know it sucks, but it's just not for you. In the same way that I look at this woman, right? It's great that you're doing yoga. You're 400 pounds. And I just think, like, it's awesome that you're doing what you can, but maybe pick up something else. If you don't want to lose weight, maybe do something else. Something else is going to be more, a little bit more aerobic. Something's going to maybe burn some calories. It seems like you're doing the most to maintain the size and you're still doing the yoga. I just don't understand it. Like, why do that when you could do something else? You know what I'm talking about? Maybe getting out, getting out of the seated position would be better than doing this, in my opinion. I don't know. I don't know, dude. It just kind of seems like it's useless. Why are you doing that? There's, no, there's nothing else? I think you would have burned more calories building that Lego Venator set that I was telling you about. I don't know, dude. I don't know. I just kind of feel like people just want to do stuff, even if it's, like, not in their wheelhouse. You know, you don't see me... You don't see me uh, trying to play basketball. Uh, you don't see me uh, auditioning for BBC auditions because I'm not black. You know what I'm talking about? Like, there are plenty of things that I could do, and there are plenty of things that I just can't do. And I just kind of feel like this is, like, I'm glad that she's doing stuff, but... And if you think, like, oh, David, like, this is just a one-off video. No, this is her entire TikTok. She's still making videos to this day like this, okay? Inhale, arms up for upward salute. Exhale. Forward, forward. I just want to know who's like watching this video and going like, wow, I can't wait to go to this woman's like, I can't wait to go to this woman's yoga class on the Zoom call and sit down. You're like, what do you even do at that point? It's probably like being in like homeschool, right? We're just like watching TV while people talk to you on Zoom. And then, then when they ask you like, oh, Jonathan, can you tell us what you think about the, the thing? You just go, oh, yeah, my bad. Let me go ahead and look. 
Um, I don't think about anything, actually. Probably nothing. Like, that's basically what you're doing at this point. Like, you're just kind of in a Zoom call watching a, a big woman do yoga, which is fine, I guess, for some people. Inhale. Left leg back for high. Like, what even is this, dude? Like, I get it. Maybe this movement is, like, really restrictive for her. But if I was in this class and you, like, move your left leg back, dude, I can do that all day. Like, look at look at the aerobics, bro. Like, if you were like, oh, move your left leg back, David. Like, what, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would be able to do this for, like, 45 minutes, bro. And you're, you're struggling to push the leg backwards and do this? I don't know. I just kind of feel like people need... To understand that not everything is going to be for them. Not everything. And that's all right, dude. I get it. Like, there are things you want to do. Maybe you want to be an astronaut. But you're black. I don't know. Do they accept black guys as astronauts? I don't know, dude. Whatever. Lunge. Exhale through center. Like, what even is this doing for you? Inhale. Seated cow. Exhale. Seated cat. <laughs> Forward fold. <laughs> Inhale. I don't know. Salute. Exhale, hands through heart center for Tadasana. Great. I mean, it's, it's awesome. I think that she's doing it. She's living it big. She's doing it big. Great for her. Beautiful her. I hope that she has a lot of success in doing this. I just don't know who's audest I don't know who's coming through this, though. I just want to know, like, who is this for? You know, you ever, you ever sometimes, sometimes, like, watch something, and then you go, wow, this is useless. And then you think, wait a minute, this person has a following. And then you go, wait a minute. Are there people like doing this or like, are they hate watching it? Like what exactly is going on here? No one is glorifying obesity. Everyone is glorifying thinness. She has a great set of teeth on her, dude, doesn't she? She kind of got a lot of bottom chin though. Like a lot of uh, bottom chin jaw section area. It's a little concerning sometimes when I see people with a lot of that. I am now a size zero. Everyone is complimenting me, telling me how pretty I am. What are you humble bragging for, dude? Okay, we get it. Like, I don't know why. I, maybe they're doing it for good reasons, but when people start videos and they go, yeah, so like I lost a lot of weight and then like everybody's complimenting me now and like everybody's telling me I'm so pretty and I'm so just gorgeous. All I get from that is like, okay, I get it. Like your people are telling you you look good, but like, dude, come on. Like, are you trying to are you trying to have a video about fat people or are you trying to tell people how good you look now? Which one is it? You know what I'm talking about? It's got to be one or the other, dude. This humble bragging is a little bit too far. And asking me, like, how did you do it? I wish I was skinny like you. Guess what? No one was ever telling me, oh, I wish I was fat like you when I was a size 18. Yeah, because most people don't find it attractive or desirable to be overweight. There's not like really much flexing on that particular front. Like, what are you even bragging about at that point? Like, I got two sets of elbows, or sometimes when I look down, I don't see my belly button. Yeah, there's not many, like, goodnesses about being overweight. Why would you expect, why would you expect anybody to give you compliments at that size? That's so weird, dude. Why is this even something you're talking about, man? Yeah, of course. I'm seeing more and more videos on, like, ultra-thin celebs and influencers and people talking about the backlash against the movement against fat people. And let me tell you something, thin was actually never out. We have glorified the thin white body for literal centuries. Why is it specified on thin white bodies? Aren't most like Asian people, like people from Asia, aren't they like thinner? Aren't they thinner? Aren't they? I'm pretty sure that's like the burrow. Okay, here in America, if we're, if we're talking about like westernized countries, dude, I think there's a lot of white people that are really, really fat, okay? Like, that's like a norm thing now, okay? Because we have tons of food, people like eating, it's really accessible to eat food nowadays, like, there's a ton of it. So, I understand that, like, boogeyman, oh, white people bad, I get it, dude. I really, really understand, it's like a be-all, end-all for these people, and it's something they can easily latch onto, but it's really fucked up. Because it's like, I can't do anything about it, you know? And like, if you're gonna sit there and you're gonna go like, white people bad, or you're gonna say like, oh yeah, white people are like the definitive person that we judge based off of the beauty standard. Maybe like, where are you from, first of all? Like, I, I would really love to know that. Maybe in your country, maybe like, I guess in Scandinavian countries, perhaps? But isn't like the population of white people in the Scandinavian countries like 98% white? Like, what do you get, like four black guys in your entire countries? Like, maybe, sure, if that's the case. But like, here in America, dude, yeah, it's pretty fucking diverse. Pretty fucking diverse, dude, I don't know, man. Like, we don't really have like the white superficial like body type anymore is like the thing like sure there are a bunch of white people that are incentivized based off beauty but i don't think it has really anything to do with them being white but just more so like they're just beautiful people like would you ever look at henry cavill and go he's only beautiful because he's white are you fucking serious 
Are you serious, bro? That guy has a jawline that you can cut glass with. People will not give that up so easily. If you can get close to having that kind of power, people will do anything for it. I think we've seen that by now with Ozempic and all the, those medications. I mean, decades of diet culture has proven that to us. But let me tell you something. When I tell people that I've lost the weight because I've been sick and I'm on medication, you know what their reaction is? Oh, can I get on those meds? They would rather have. Most of the time, it's it's probably because the, the process of being fat involves a lot of negative aspects to your health. So naturally, people are going to lock on to, wait a minute, you are probably in better health than you ever were. Granted, you did get to that level through obviously like not good means, like being sick. I don't know exactly what she means by not by being sick, but... Yeah, most people don't want to be fat. It's not a good thing to be fat. There's like little to no benefit to being fat. So most people are going to latch on to how did you lose weight? What was the what, what what was the disease? Like what happened? Like maybe they're just joking around. But most of the time, those people are saying that stuff because there's, there's a lot of like value in being thinner and they want to find out how you got to that level. A neurological disease, a brain <laughs> illness, then be fat you're not getting you're not understanding the point dude it's not the it's not the way you got there there are bad ways to achieve good things of course but that doesn't take away from the fact that you achieved a good thing as a byproduct of having something terrible happen to you like i understand what you're saying like nobody should have a brain answer nobody should have brain issues nobody should have like i understand what you're saying i get it like they shouldn't be going oh wow i wish i had that nobody by the way nobody actually believes that shit everybody wants to lose weight the organic way most people by the way but what they're saying to you is that even though you went through this like mega trauma this terribleness that you most definitely went through which is bad i agree terrible when you got to the end destination which was like the weight loss right they're looking at that as an accomplishment okay and like i said you can get many places through bad means but the the end goal if it's good then people are going to look at that end goal as good, right? Like people that have heroin addictions, they lose a lot of weight, right? But at the end of that, they lose a lot of weight. Like Foodie Beauty, for instance, lost like 80 pounds in like a year because she was addicted to like meth or something like that. Now, is it a good thing to be addicted to meth? No, I would never advocate for the addiction. I'm going to take the, the crazy take here, this crazy hot take and say that being addicted to meth is not good, okay? Like I know that's crazy to say, but... I'm going to stand on that. I'm going to die on the hill of being addicted to meth is not a good thing, right? But when she was addicted to that meth or whatever drug it was, she lost a lot of weight as a byproduct of being addicted to that methamphetamines or whatever. So is it good to be addicted to meth? No. Did she lose weight and that was good for her? Yes. Okay. Like obviously like you're, you're missing the major point, which is that people are looking at the weight loss as the accomplishment, not the fact that you had a fucking brain disease or whatever it was. That's how far people will go to be thin. But no, they, bro, nobody's, do, man, nobody ever said like, man, oh, bro, I just totally wish that I had some kind of brain disease so I could just lose weight as a by. Nobody's doing that shit, bro. No, what are you, you're totally missing the plot here, dude. You're missing the entire purpose of what they're actually saying. They're talking about the weight loss, man. They're saying you look better because you lost weight. They're not saying be... They're not saying that the, the fucking brain disease was the, the, oh man, that's fucking great because you lost weight. No, they're saying it sucks that you had that brain disease, but look at you now, like you look so much better. That's what they're saying. And let me tell you something. There is power in being a thin white woman. It actually makes me sick. I mean, I, I love it when, because like, okay, according to, I don't know exactly how we want to divide up the privilege counters here but being a white dude a, a, a thin white man that's like the pinnacle right like there's nothing above that in like from most people like being a thin white dude with a suit and i guess maybe like a mustache maliety um those are like the top dudes right but i guess right below them are thin white women like i guess right they're right below them but they get a little bit more credit because they're women and women are oppressed because women and I, I think it's really, really interesting when the thin white women are the ones telling us that they are, it almost kind of like, they're telling you how great they are. You know what I'm talking about? Like, oh, uh, thin white women, they have the most privilege. While your thin white woman just screams like, 
I'm just better than you. You know, I, I just hear that so often, like the projection is insane, right? But you know, maybe she's got a little bit of validity. I don't know where she's from, dude. Um, In my opinion, if you're from like a white dominated country like Scandinavia, I don't know how much more privilege you can have over like a black dude if the country only consists of like two black guys, dude. Like, aren't you guys all white there? Is I don't know where she's from exactly, but I would say I probably think that she's from those countries. Power and being a thin white woman, it actually makes me sick. I mean, let let me know if you want the self hatred as well, dude. Like, you shouldn't. You should acknowledge that maybe you have privileges in certain areas, but then again, people have different privileges depending on where they are and also the time frame. And I'll give you a good example, right? Being a fisherman is very, very good if you live off the coast of somewhere and you have a fishing boat. Being a fisherman is not good if you live in like Iowa and there's no fucking oceans near you at all and you can't fish. And the only thing that you can fish for is like corn in your mouth, right? So depending on where you live, things will be better for you and things could be worse for you, right? And another example is like being a woman it ordinarily is probably good, right? Like for most places here in the Western developed countries, like it's probably okay, right? Like the other day, somebody had commented and said like, I'm totally against sex work because in my country, most of the women that are doing sex work, it's not their choice, right? And that sucks. But here in America, most women that are doing sex work are doing sex work because it's better than working at Target for $12.99 an hour and they can get paid more money doing the sex work and people would pay them more money for doing that. It's the same thing. It's like a job, right? Now, I understand that it's very easy to point out that you're privileged in certain areas and things such and so forth. I think it's just okay to acknowledge those things. I don't think it's like really a good idea to sit there and go, oh yeah, I'm privileged, I'm this, but you don't have a solution. You're just saying like, I'm privileged because I'm white and I'm thin and I'm a woman. Okay, so like, what do you want us to do about that? Like, if you're just gonna talk about it and say I'm privileged and just leave it there, what is the purpose? I me to expand on that, but it is the truth. I mean, to change you. Okay, fine. Whatever, dude. I mean, it's the truth that they're that you're a thin white woman. But what do you mean by the privilege? Like what exactly? I don't know where she's from, dude. I don't know where like what what country are you from? First of all, bro, because like here in America, I'm not going to sit here and say that like systemic issues don't exist in the sense of like, sure, black people maybe had to deal with a lot more issues than white people had to deal with because of things like redlining and not being able to buy a house, your grandparents not being able to buy a house for a long period of time. Therefore, the white grandparents might have had the ability to buy a house and you didn't have to buy a house. So maybe you don't have as much land in your name as this, you know, like there are things that we can do and adjust and have things that, 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 that maybe are better for certain demographics of people or whatever, right? Sure. I understand. I'm not saying systemic issues don't exist and i'm not even one of these people that thinks that systemic issues are just built in things that say black people bad in the law obviously it stretches way farther than that but you're not doing anything all you're saying is that i am privileged it, it ba you're basically just saying i'm better than you like that's all i'm getting is that i am privileged is basically i'm better than you you're not coming up with a solution you're just saying that you're just better society you have to address racism and patriarchy and ableism systemic issues in my opinion are leak okay this is going to be like, I don't know if people are going to freak out about this, but like systemic racism or like systemic problems like misogyny and things like that are the lowest forms of impact when it comes to racism. Okay. Like you might be dealing with stuff, but most of the stuff that's systemically racist or systemically misogynistic or mis mis systemically like, you know, whatever towards bl black women, black people, whatever. Most of that stuff is very light, like it's passive, if that makes any sense. Like you might feel it, but most of the time it's going to be very, very like marshmallowy, right? The real racism is individually. Like you could possibly, as a white person, have dealt with more, ra more, more racism than a black guy has dealt with systemically racist, if that makes any sense. Because... The personal races where there's like that one person that tells you black people are terrible and disgusting and they wear too much lotion and stuff like that is always going to be more impactful than that one time you got pulled over because maybe you were black, if that makes any sense. Like there, there are going to be, it's going to be way harder for, it's going to be way harder when you get that like individual racism, things like that. And I'm not saying that you can't acknowledge that there is systemic racism. I'm not saying that, but the, the bigger form of like most of the time. It, the bigger form is individual racism or individual misogyny, individual like patriarchal, whatever the fuck. It's individual. Like the, the random person you know or you meet, that's usually where you get the most impact, if, if that makes any sense. And people would rather inject themselves with Ozempic than deal with all of that. It is much easier 
to glorify thinness than to address our collective internalized fat phobia. She has such a deep agenda that she's literally ignoring the main reason why people were actually complimenting her. There's a reason why people take Ozempic. There's a reason why people seek out thinness as much as they, like even fat people don't want to be fat. There is literally almost no advantage to being fat unless you're like caught in a mountain somewhere or you're in a snowstorm and you're not going to be, be able to eat for a few days. Like being in a society guarantees you to a certain degree that food is going to be accessible, it's going to be always affordable to a certain degree, and to top it off, it's always there. So when you are when you live in a society and you're fat, that indicates that you have poor self-control. You're going out of your way and you're eating all the excess food when you don't need to do that. You could just eat what you need and then when you're hungry again, you can go and eat that again. Like you just do that like for, 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 for literally your entire life. And don't get me wrong, I understand that People are not just obese like night and day. It usually takes a, a buildup of time. Like people don't just get fat all at once. It takes years and years and years and sometimes even upwards of a decade to become clinically obese or even overweight, right? I understand that. But when, pe when you say things like, I can't believe people are like out here trying to take Ozempic to lose weight. Weight loss is like once you see what your body is capable of doing. Like I think so many people that are fat and obese – they have no idea what they look like. They have no idea what their bodies are capable of. And they're just literally sitting there losing durability off of themselves every single day, living their life on hard mode. So, like, you have to see that these people are not looking at, like, a, like a, a, they're not looking at it the same way that you are. Like, I understand this woman has an agenda and she has to say certain things. But, like, it's very, it's very jarring. Wait, 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 wait. What? You're, oh, hold up, bro. Hold up. Can I just... Your weekly reminder that you deserve to enjoy your food. And I think she has like a little Debbie's. Is that a little Wait, Debbie's? What? Yeah, some kind of like little Debbie's, right, dude? I used to eat these when I was a kid, dude. These things, when you're a kid and you eat these, I don't think you realize that they're actually garbage. Like they're not good quality food. They're, these are like those little Debbie swirl things that um, they all have like a coating. Like most little Debbie's have this coating on them of just grease or like a layer of slick on them. I don't know exactly what it is, but it, every single time I've ever eaten a little Debbie's, I don't know if it's like the factory where they're making them or whatever, dude. Maybe you're getting the backwash of the Mexican guy that put it together. I don't know. I have, I have no idea what they're doing with it, but it's always kind of greasy. Like when you pick it up, right? And you eat it, which I don't recommend doing it because you're just sliding it. It just like when it hits your stomach, it's just like that bomb noise. That, mm, poosh, like that's your stomach. And after you're done, there's like a slick, a grease, a kind of like a texture onto your fingers. And then when you like pull it apart, it, you know what I'm talking about? It's kind of like lines or whatever. And you have to like actually sit there and wash your hands very thoroughly to get rid of that, that greasy flavor texture. And that's going down your mouth. That's going into your throat and sliding down into it. But if you want to eat little Debbie's, go ahead, dude. What? And if you want to, you know, if you, uh, you know, you feel like you don't do, you don't, it's not about deserving it or it's not about like, you know, uh, just eat whatever you want type thing. That's fine. You could do whatever you want, but it's probably most definitely leading to a lot of problems. But go ahead, slay queen. I mean, I could think of like a lot of other things to eat that would be way more enjoyable than this. Like I just ate two apples. I cut them up. I cut up my apples because I'm a bitch. But I do that because I like I like to have the pieces in front of me. And I know some people like to put peanut butter on there. I don't. I just like regular apples. You could have done that. You could have just ate like an apple or two and then just ate that. It would have been way more satisfying to you. But I guess it's chocolate. It's got the cream filling. So, I mean, I see it to a certain degree. They don't make these things. Uh, they obviously make these things for a reason. Dude, it's not that good. It's fucking Lil Debbie's. Okay, dude. It's not, it's not a delicacy. It, nobody's eating this shit. The only reason people do eat this is because it's convenient and they see it. And maybe you probably grew up with it. Like, I know several friends of mine that grew up eating Lil Debbie's and they still eat Lil Debbie's to this day because they grew up eating them. And them oatmeal cream pies are not bad, dude. The oatmeal cream pies are probably the best thing Lil Debbie's has to offer, dude. And if you're out here and you're eating those, I'm not going to like hate. I'm not going to hate on you for those. Like they are like 400, 500 calories per one, but they have progressively been getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I don't know if the calories are keeping up, but they have been getting smaller and smaller and smaller. That's the only one that I can actually vouch for. The honey buns are really gross too. You can just enjoy it. It's fine. Eat whatever you want. I don't think that people should be limiting themselves 
You should be absolutely deciding, though, what you do and do not indulge in. If you want to be a vegan, if you just want to eat just, just meat, you want to be a meat eater, whatever, dude, uh, or you want to eat like this, go ahead, as long as you acknowledge what the food is doing to you, right? Because if you're just sitting down all day doing nothing and you eat two, three, four, five, five thousand extra calories on, on top of what you need, you have to at least understand that that food's not gonna. It's not gonna. It's not gonna do good for you, right? Uh, I'm not one of these people that sits there and goes like, I think that for certain people, the, the understanding that food has certain purposes. Okay, like, would you get more value out of eating chicken breast compared to this little Debbie's? Yeah, 100. But if you want to eat the little Debbie's, you can. If you already hit your calories intake for the day then go ahead. Like every food has its like purpose in the sense of as long as you know what it's going to be doing to you, you know, like if you already eat your calories for the day, sorry, if you already like, let's say your calories are 2,500 and you already hit all your macros and you have that extra 500 calories. If you want to go and you want to eat one of these, like go ahead, fine, whatever that you want to eat disgusting, dis really bad slop food. Go ahead. I only ask you to at least acknowledge what you're putting in your mouth because ultimately you are what you eat and it'd be way better for you. Um, to eat food that is actually practically nutritionally filled. What? On Sunday, I organized the first ever Fierce Fat Flea Market with 27 vendors and a huge clothing swap, a donate what you can clothing swap. Oh, because fat people don't have a lot of clothing options. Yeah, okay, I see. But like, I just, I just want to understand why everything has to be like it's, it's their life, right? On Sunday, I organized the first ever Fierce Fat Flea Market. Why? With 27 vendors and a huge clothing swap, a donate what you can clothing swap. Because, because fat people don't have a lot of options and they have to, they have very limited options of the clothes that they can get because a lot of clothing vendors have a very hard time catering to plus size communities because all clothing sizes are not going to be uniformly created across all genres of body types because that's literally impossible. I understand. Like, this is, I mean, hey, if you want to do a clothing swap, I don't know. I hope you wash the clothes beforehand, dude. I know that it's really, really tragic when somebody gives you a piece of, bro, I remember one time, dude, I walked into this dude's car, right? I got into his car and we were going to the gym and this dude had a, I think he had, it was a t-shirt on the the passenger, like, I was there, I was a passenger princess, I got in, and I was like, bro, what's this, he was like, oh, it's just my t-shirt, and I was like, oh, okay, he was like, just toss it back there, and I was like, why do you have a t-shirt here, he was like, oh, yeah, I was just wiping my nuts with that shit, and I was like, what, dude, what are you talking, we, I, that was just in my hands, you know what I'm talking about, dude, I, I could have, like, put it in my mouth or something, or wiped my face with it or something like that, and you just told me that you wiped your nuts on that shit, I, it was just in my hands. He was like, yeah, bro, I just wiped my nuts with that. And I was just looking at him like, bro, yo, that's why is it up in the front, dude? Like, do you do Uber? You know what I'm talking about, dude? Like, what is up? But sometimes when you're a fat person, if you're exchanging clothes, you don't know what the grease content on that clothes looks like. You got to hope that they use some type of detergent, some type of uh, cleaning agent that will properly cleanse the the deodorants, the, 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 the ingestion of the, the body odors or whatever on, on the person. So I hope that they at least wash them. And it was there incredible. should be like a washing machine there, I think. Like when you go up to this flea market, if you're exchanging clothes, like have a washing machine and a dryer right there on the spot and have it like multiple of them. So people can just toss in the clothes, dry them and take them out and like, oh, yeah, bro, thanks for these clothes. Because I know them things are going to be stench. Well, and to everybody who came out, Straight like, must. I am still coming off the cloud that that event was. And I just want to let everybody know the next one will be in October. Oh shit, dude. We going. We going. I need some plus size clothes, dude. I've been I've been wearing these clothes for way too long. Okay. I'm sick of wearing the same clothes every single day because people don't make skinny size clothes. Okay. I'm starting a revolution. We need we need a flea market of just thinner people to come to that are really, really thin. And you know what? Everybody's included, man, woman, or mustached or not. Everybody can be included, and we're going to exchange clothes. If they do or do not fit you, it doesn't matter. We're going to communicate. We're going to talk to each other, and we're going to sprinkle each other with sugar. And if you're interested in helping plan it or work at it or vend at it, let me know. Probably Oakland. But I also think this gives me a moment to just say that, like, if you are fat and you are online and you are existing and you're seeing all the things that everybody is saying, just remember that you are incredible. What about me, though? Like, forget about the fat people for a second. Can I? Can somebody tell me I'm amazing? Like, come on. I need it. I deserve it. I'm amazing, right? I 
it's fine. It's I'm, I don't have a problem with this. If you want to do like a fat flea market, as long as they're not like directly negating against, they should have the ability. If it's like a private organization, you guys just want to have your own safe space of just fat people and you don't want to be intruded upon by thinner people. I get it. Go ahead. Do what you want, dude. It's America. Have your safe space or whatever the fuck. It is a little cringe, but. I think these people should have their ability to, I mean, granted, it's probably not good because these people are literally intolerant to other opinions and what other people think. So, I mean, it's like literally the personification of not knowing anything or being very, being purposefully ignorant because you're purposefully, you're purposefully, you're purposefully staying away from outside opinions, but you should have your event. I'm sure it didn't smell that bad. And you're so important. Thanks. And you're amazing. And you deserve to live out loud very visibly. I mean, you saying they deserve to live is fine. But, like, you do realize that you're encouraging people to be fat, right? Like, you you saying that is, it's fine. Like, you can go ahead and say that. But, uh, you know, you, you should live is kind of a, mm, kind of touchy a little bit. You do not deserve to receive hate for just existing. It just depends. Can we just hold up for a second? Um, Sometimes people get hate for a variety of different reasons. And I think saying you're getting hate for existing is disingenuous because oftentimes okay you might be talking about being internet on the internet okay if you're on the internet no matter what you do you're going to get somebody that calls you a sasquatch you're going to get somebody that says your foreskin looks like it's been inverted you're going to get people that tell you that you look like you smell like squidward right you're going to have just people saying that stuff and i'm not saying it's a good or a bad thing i think it's something you have to understand being on the internet for as long as i have been i've come to the conclusion that most women on the internet are men and big meated men at that i've come across way too many women that are just flat out big beautiful men and that's fine if you like big beautiful men i personally don't like to hit up a woman and then get a penis picture as a return you know i just don't like that personally um and don't get me wrong i have met a few women that were organic women which is beautiful i do enjoy organic women those are the best ones the ones that are not organic women that do possess penises that are solid men are not the ones that most people want to deal with especially if you're a heterosexual man so there's that I don't even know what we're talking. Oh, if you're on the internet, you have to expect some type of pushback. If you're making content in the fat acceptance community, like it's going to be obvious that there are going to be people that disagree with that because it's a crazy, uh, it's a really, really crazy thing for a lot of people to believe in. It doesn't, you know, it's very, very, very outside the, the public zeitgeist. Most people don't really know what that is. So yes, you're going to get some pushback. I don't think people should receive hate for existing, definitely, but I don't think that's exactly what they mean by existing. Like they are talking about being on the internet criticism for just existing and you don't deserve anybody to say anything about your body that's obviously not true um that's obviously not true uh it just again it just depends on where you, we have entire industries dedicated to people making opinions on your body and talking about your body if that didn't happen oh maybe she means only people on the internet dude <sighs> Oh, man, it just depends. It just depends, dude. You can't just say you don't deserve somebody to do something to you because you exist. Bro, there might be a little bit more nuance to that. So, anyways, thanks. Keep being beautiful. I just learned this plain seatbelts are not long enough to fit around my body. I fit into the seat just fine, but the seatbelt is too short. So many times I see people having problems like this, and I think... Why don't, like, how many times have you had to deal with this problem? And how many times have you had to deal with this problem without doing anything about it? You get what I'm talking about? Like, hear me out. If you, if it's snowing out one day, right, and you walk down your driveway and it's icy and you slip and fall, what are you going to do from that point on? You're going to salt it. You're going to salt the driveway. You learn from your mistake and you're no longer going to do that anymore, right? And I'm not even necessarily saying that this person needs to lose weight. But I'm also saying, like, dude, you have to be at least aware that this is going to be something that you have to deal with if you're going to be a plus-size person. Like, I don't know how many times I've, I've met or seen plus-size people, people that are in larger bodies, big, beautiful, you know, busky people. I've seen them so many times complaining about the same thing over and over and over again. Like, going to the same targets, going to the same retailers, going on the same planes, and then complaining that the seatbelts don't fit, the, the chairs don't fit, whatever it may be. There's never any clothes for people. And I always think, like... Bro, you knew they didn't have the clothes. You knew that you had to have a seatbelt expander. You knew this. Like, dude, you've been living in this body for like 20 years, bro. Like, you had to a certain degree, you have to, if you don't want to lose weight, that's fine. Go ahead, live your life. I don't care. But like, dude, how the hell are you going on so many trips, going to so many retailers, and you're still surprised they don't sell the clothes or the seats or whatever? <laughs> Thank you.
waiting for the flight attendant, number one, to respond to my call. Them, them dudes is busy. The flight attendants are real busy, dude, especially if it's a really, really booked plane. Oh, did she just, she literally just recorded this all the way through of just like, we're just staring up from like the, the seat itself, like from the legs. It's, it's a little weird seeing somebody breathe with all that mass. But at least they're breathing. Yeah, we can see that you're still... Like, what's the point of this video, right? Like, I get it. Like, oh, wow, I have to wait so long for a seatbelt extender, right? But, dude, you do understand that even... Like, there's a lot to do, right? And they have to usher people into the plane. There's probably like a good 20 minutes when everybody sits down. They still have to like sort things out and they have to get everything ready. And there's still like a whole bunch of stuff that still needs to occur. You do know that you're still going to have to wait for that regardless, right? I remember I saw a video one time of a guy that was, if there's three seats, right? You know, there's three seats per aisle, right? On a plane. So like maybe you're in the middle seat, maybe you're on the side seat, maybe you're on the other side seat. This guy was on the side seat and there was a guy on the middle seat. And the guy on the side seat was like, bro, let me get up. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get in line. And the guy was like, bro, what are you talking about? I'm not getting in, I'm not getting up, dude. Like there's the line is literally right here, and there's people still lining up behind it. Like, you want me to get up just to stand up and wait in line? And I mean, that's a really good point. Like, what are you doing at that point? You might as well just keep sitting down, wait for everybody to usher out at that point, dude. You're already at the back. What are you even gonna do? Stand up and just wait? Dude, it's the, the door hasn't even opened yet. People are still just lining up. And the dude got up. And like jumped over this dude, and then he just sat, he just stood there. He just stood there. He was like, Yeah, I don't care. I don't give a fuck, bro. I don't care. And the guy just looked at him and was like, Bro, what are you doing? You're just standing up. Like, you could have just sat down and just waited. Instead, you're just standing up doing nothing. You're literally in the same position, just standing up. You're just wasting everybody's, you're, whatever you want to do. It's the same thing here. Like, I understand, but there's a cue. There's a there is a line of things. There are people that have things that are going on, and maybe you're just not top priority, but guess what? It doesn't matter because you're in a queue. You'll you'll eventually get your shit. And the thing is, whether it takes you five minutes or 20 minutes, if it, the thing takes 20 minutes in general, it doesn't matter. I used to have this philosophy so many times when I used to work in retail, and people used to hit me with a, oh, you know, this wasn't, this wasn't like set up correctly. You, you know, the, 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 the price was not arranged correctly. Like I'm waiting here. I'm waiting here until you solve this issue. And they, they acted like it was a problem, like that I was solving their problem. I don't care. Like I, dude, I'm here for eight hours. I don't care what I'm doing in that eight hours, dude. You, I can, I can serve you or I can serve a hundred other people. I don't care. So like, it doesn't matter. I know I'm leaving in eight hours regardless. However you want to sort this out is fine with me. It's the same thing here. If the plane is going to take off in 20 minutes, whether you get your seatbelt now or later is irrelevant. You're going to get your seatbelt, guaranteed. Don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. I don't know why this woman has set up an entire video dedicated to a stewardess not bringing her her, her seatbelt extender, dude. It's going to happen. Don't worry. You, you didn't need to record all this. Can I get a seatbelt extender? Flight ascended to ask what I need. Watching flight attendant number one look confused. Flight attendant number two gestures behind her and they both laugh. Dude, this woman got no life, bro. I hate when people do this where people like, man, you know how many times I've been around people that cannot keep their head out of other people's businesses? I remember I was over this one person's house, right? And this girl was like, dude, look at these guys outside. Look at these guys outside. And they just saw me and I was like, oh, okay. And then they, she was like, I think, and they're laughing. They're laughing. And they're probably laughing at me. And I'm just thinking like, dude, you don't, you don't got anything going on right now? Like, what are you... Why are you bothering with the two dudes that are across the street in their driveway talking about whatever the fuck they're talking about? Like, why are you so bothered about that, dude? Like, you know what I'm talking about? I hate being around people that focus so much heavily on what other people that they don't even know that have no interaction with these people ever in their entire life. They have so much invested in them. And I just think, like, it's fine to have awareness out in public, but when you're doing things like that, it's not awareness. That's just you. I don't know. Like, you just have nothing going on. Like, you, you know what I'm talking about? Like, I hate it when people... As if, like, I don't have anything going on. You know what I'm talking about? Like, can you believe that they said this about me or they did this? I'm just thinking, like, bro, what are you talking about? Like, that guy said, have a good day. And you're like, oh, but the way they said it, the way they, they did I'm just like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, get what are you fucking doing right now? Like, do not go drink, like, iced tea or something. Like, what are you talking about? Why are you so bothered by, how do you even know that these people are laughing at you, right? I mean, look, 
I know she's not saying that they're laughing at her, but the if you're looking at the, the way she oriented this text, the assumption is, okay, what I'm getting from it is that you think that they are laughing about you. When in reality, dude, these people have so much more going on in their life. It's not just about, these people are literally main character syndromes where they think they're, they, the entire world revolves around them. When in reality, everybody's got a lot of shit going on simultaneously. You're your own person and they are their own person and they're doing stuff and you're doing stuff. You understand? It's not just, it's not always about you. I'm not saying that they're not laughing at you and I'm not saying they are laughing at you. I'm just saying you burdening yourself with the knowledge or the idea that they may be laughing about you is not helping. It's not, it's not because you never know. You can't mind read and you're not going to ask these people, hey, were you just laughing at me? Because that's weird. Nobody's doing that shit. Just, just like stop burdening yourself with information that's not going to help you. About to have a panic attack. Bro, you got, you got, you need to grow up a little bit, dude. This is some weird... humiliated but at least now i'm safe what do you mean you're humiliated dude you asked a flight attendant you asked a flight attendant if they had a seatbelt extender and then you got the seatbelt extender why would you be humiliated because you needed a seatbelt extender if you're plus size you have to at least understand that you're gonna have to deal with some of the problems of being plus size man i don't know how else to say it than that you can't just be complaining or saying like i'm i'm so embarrassed Look in the mirror then. Look in the mirror. Why is it the flight attendant's fault? Why? Whatever, man. Whatever, man. Okay, you know what? Forget. It. We're going to end the video here, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate it if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. If you watch the video in its entirety, leave it down below by typing in ketchup because I have some ketchup here from Mac McDonald's from Mackey's. Um, by the way, I'm sorry if anybody hears a smoke detector in the background. There's a smoke detector in my hallway. It's not mine, okay? It's the, I don't know what floor it is. I think it's the second. They have, there's nobody living there, okay? There used to be gay men that lived below me, but they don't live there anymore because one of them died. And they, there was a smoke detector in the hallway that's going off right now. And it went off for like 10 minutes. And I was like, oh, let me, let me just go downstairs and turn it off. So I, I don't, there's no smoke, by the way. It's just going off. And then I got like a, a broomstick and I just pushed the button to turn it off. And then it, it was good for about five minutes and then it started going off again and I did it again and then it started going off again. So I just called up the maintenance and I was like, dude, there's this fucking smoke detector. It's not the one that you, it's like the one that you can't really take off the wall or something like that. And it's not my fucking apartment. So I'm not going to like take it off the wall. I mean, it's technically the, the hallway, but still, um, it's been going on for like over an hour now. I don't know what the fuck is going on with that shit. There's no smoke. There's nothing, dude. Nobody lives in the second floor. It's not even in the fucking second floor. It's literally the hallway of the second floor. So I'm just hearing like beep 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 and i'm just hearing that like progressively thank god it's like in the front i'm in the back but whatever um sorry if you hear anything in the background if you don't hear anything in the background that i'm just complaining for no reason but either way i care about you and i want to make sure that your viewing pleasure is always the highest it could possibly be so thank you for being here thank you for accepting me for the imperfect human being that i am i try my hardest just to forget everything because of you, I don't know. I don't know how the song goes. But anyway, you're an amazing specimen of human being. If you were a liquid sustenance, you would be water and you would be a lubricated water. You'd be one that was flavored up with some really, really good caffeinated water. Because that's the kind that I like. Those are my favorite ones, the caffeinated waters. But I do enjoy regular water. I have a water bottle right here. So I drink that from time to time just to hydrate myself. I always have a water no matter where I go. So I'm always hydrated. And I know you're always hydrated because you're such a beautiful person. But anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, Twitter, Discord, all that stuff is going to be linked in the description of this channel and the description of this video. So anyway, enjoy the rest of your day, guys.